Hello, I'm Alejo Castanos. And I'm Tyler Martin. And today we'll be talking to you about our work on graph convolutional networks for Swahili news classification. So although Swahili is one of the most widely spoken languages, it remains underrepresented in NLP research. This underrepresentation manifests itself in a number of ways. Firstly, there's a shortage of annotated data sets and accessible benchmarks. And this tends to make getting into the field quite difficult and even just building on research that already exists is a challenge. The second point is that uh, NLP techniques are generally developed for high resource languages. And so there's a real degree of uncertainty as to whether they optimally transfer uh, to a low resource setting. And finally, a shortage of purposeful tools and libraries for languages like Swahili makes getting the work just that little bit uh, more difficult. So in our work, we're gonna be looking at uh, Zenodo Swahili News Classification Dataset, which is a corpus of uh, news pieces and articles um, where each article is labeled as one of six categories. And you can see those categories on the y-axis of our figure. And the distribution of uh, documents into each one of those categories is given on the x-axis. You can also see how we split the data set up into training validation test sets by looking at our legend. So the exact um, area that we're kind of honing in on is semi-supervised Swahili news classification. And we believe this to be particularly applicable for low resource language, since in addition to it being difficult to access uh, good data, the data you have is often sparsely labeled or even noisily labeled. And so if you have a learning technique, which is both able to take advantage of your supervised labeled uh, section of your data set, as well as all the unlabeled data, you can expect to um, have good results. The three key contributions that we're going to highlight in this uh, presentation to you is as follows. The first being that we provide a set of accessible uh, benchmarks for the semi-supervised setting problem. We then have the first application of graph neural networks to any African language, at least to our knowledge. And finally, we present a memory efficient variant of text graph convolutional networks. So, let's talk you through our baseline. And I think the easiest way to do that is to focus your attention on the high level overview of our model pipeline on the bottom of the screen. So starting on the left, we have our corpus of news documents. We then pass that through some kind of document processing stage, which gives us for each document a set of features. We then pass that through to the logistic regression layer, where we make a prediction as to which of the six uh, news categories our document falls into. Now the document pre-processing stage um, can be any particular model or heuristic you like, but we're looking at using five traditional NLP benchmarks. The first one being the TFIDF model, which is a normalized version of the counts model, which we use as our second option. We then also look at using um, averaged uh, fast text embeddings, which are pre-trained. And the last two on the list here are two variants of the popular doctor vector model, um, that is the paragraph vector distributed bag of words training regime and the paragraph vector distributed memory technique. So now that we have our benchmarks, we can kind of compare them to a graph neural network. And the reason why graph neural networks are applicable here is that you can think of a corpus as containing an implicit graph structure uh, based on the semantic and syntactic relationships both within a document or between documents. And the reason we want to view it this way is that graph neural networks are really good at semi-supervised learning. They're able to achieve great results in this area because they aggregate information from a neighborhood of nodes uh, to generate rich high-level feature representations for their nodes. So more concretely, if we look at the figure on the bottom of the slide and think about the nodes being words or documents, we can see that how if we want to generate a high uh, level rich feature representation HI for the node VI, we can aggregate information from all the blue nodes along our red links to obtain 
both information uh, from the input features and the graph structure. So with that being said, I'm going to hand over to Tyler, who will talk you through um, some of the results and conclude. OK, now moving into uh, some of the experimental results. So in this table, we have the test accuracy and macro F1 score for the document classification task with the mean and standard deviation for each model shown. And for this task, only 20% of the training labels are used to train each model, making this a semi-supervised task. And because of the class imbalance, we consider the F1 score to be the more important metric. And the counts model and uh, TF-IDF perform remarkably well, given their simplicity. And now looking towards uh, the bottom of the table, we can see that the text GC invariants perform the best out of all of the models, and in particular, the text to vec variant, which makes use of word to vec and doc to vec embeddings to represent the words and uh, document input features, respectively. And uh, this text to vec variant has a reduced memory footprint, which makes it more computationally attractive and faster to train. So now, instead of using 20%, of the training level labels, we consider the effect of using even less labels uh, with increments of 1, 5, 10, and 20% for the document classification task. And so you can see how the reduction in the number of labels affects each model's performance. And the text GCN models consistently outperform the traditional techniques, most notab noticeably as the proportion of labels is reduced to 1 and 5%. And so the counts model, which previously performed relatively well, has a noticeable degradation in performance as the number of training labels is decreased. In conclusion, um, in our paper, we implement two versions of a text GCN uh, model for a semi-supervised Swahili news classification task. And we find that these models outperform a variety of traditional methods especially when only a small number of labels are used. And this work also demonstrates the implicit graph nature of a set of documents or corpus, which is exploited by the text GCN model and is an interesting direction uh, for other doc document classification tasks. So for future work, um, an alternative graph uh, structure could be considered. Uh, so for example, a document to document similarity feature uh, could be added to the graph. And additionally, inductive GNN methods could be considered um, in which previously unseen nodes can be classified in testing. So here are some of the important papers that are work referenced. And finally, you can find us on GitHub with this QR code. Thank you for listening.